All right, guys, today we're gonna do a fun video talking about two sharpened pry bars. Now, it may come as a surprise because generally speaking, when it comes to knives, I actually don't love sharpened pry, bar, eh, pry bars that much, uh, or at least in the past I've talked about that. But I will say every once in a while, there's a real time and a real place for these guys. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a couple, the two that I have and talk about them, go over them, which, which ones I like and what I like about them. and I'll, at the end, definitely let me know in the comment section below which chart <laughs> I can't speak right now, but which sharpened pry bar you would go for. Now, first up, we have the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior, or as I'll be calling it in this video, the DJ, just because saying Disaster Junior, especially right now, as I'm tongue-tied apparently, uh, doesn't work. So it's very difficult. Um, anyways, then next up, we have the Hartley Knife, uh, Hartley Knife Shop, something along those lines, HKS or Polar Knife Steel, um, TWR. And so I will be calling this one the TWR. I will be calling this one the DJ. And now let's jump into it. So first off, the uh, TWR is not necessarily a full production knife. That's probably the biggest con to it. And I want to lead with that because I know when I show this uh, knife off on the channel, I have in the past, and I will continue to because it is my friend that makes these and they're really cool, but uh, these are not full production. So they're not the easiest thing to get your hands on, but I like to do videos with these because some point in the future when you're watching this, future people will be able to acquire these, purchase them, and it will be cool. Uh, so this is what it is right now. This is what it looks like. Um, this is the TWR, and it will probably stay with this general shape and outline. Now, this one, what makes it a little bit different and a little bit more of a truthful, like, honest-to-God sharpened pry bar is this tip is very much for prying and also it is legitimately sharpened. You have a bevel here, you have a bevel here, and the tip is essentially right about here. So this thing is definitely designed to be stabbed into things and pried. And uh, this, while initially may seem very useless, does have a number of applications, especially in the tactical scene and in militaristic use. For instance, if you're trying to wedge open a door or something, you can easily shove this into a door jam. And what is nice is that that sharpened um, blade, while it's not, you know, like razor sharp, and you don't necessarily want this tip to be razor sharp because, you know, you're jamming it into things, but because it is sharpened, you can jam it into things and then crank either direction with this um, and it will get you essentially a miniature pry bar that you can really abuse. You can even, if you need to in a pinch, especially because this guy is pretty tough, really both of them are, you can jam this into something and then hit it with a blunt force object such as a hammer or something like that and give you a lot more leverage and a lot more power. And once again, these things will surprise you at how tough they are. And one kind of thing I've learned a lot um, about or learned kind of from is the little miniature pry bars that you can carry for EDC. Those are very similar in idea and application. This is just a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and of course actually sharpened. So when you jam it into very small, very tight, like uh, kind of uh, once again, like things like door jams, it will work pretty darn well. So that is one application for it. Um, pry bar tips are good for other things too. Um, in the past, knives made from companies like Strider have been used to um, clear malfunctions in machine guns and military applications. And you could certainly do that with this, getting this um, into a machine gun would make more sense than, you know, some people might say, oh, you just clear it by hand. But, you know, if you're running high round counts, let's say in like a belt fed M2 or um, an M240 or something along those lines, if you're running high round counts, that whole interface is going to be very, very hot. So the last thing you want to do is take your meaty bits and stick them into something hot. Even with gloves on, you still can get yourself burnt. So having, once again, a piece of steel that you can jam into something or you know, like kick a spent or stuck round out of a gun is another handy thing that can be done with these. So when it comes down to it, self-defense is probably not the best application. This isn't going to be like a really good stabby knife. Obviously, it is worth noting, you know, like hypothetically, you can kill someone with just about anything 
hypothetically, you can kill someone with just about anything. So, you know, you could kill someone with a uh, butter knife. Obviously, this would work better than a butter knife. So, you know, there is that kind of layer. Now, what I like about this knife for being a sharpened pry bar. First off, I like that it's reasonably compact and it's very portable. This is something that you can easily throw inside your waistband, carry it how you need to, and it just works. You can pull it out easily and put it to work, right? That's something I like about it. It also is pretty darn thick. I'm trying to remember if it's quarter inch thick or 530 seconds, but it's somewhere right around a quarter inch to 530 seconds, which in my opinion, especially for most modern steels, is plenty darn tough. And this is actually a little bit thicker than the DJ. Um, the TWR is, in my opinion, like at that perfect thickness for um, doing high, uh, high lateral or putting a lot of stress on that tip. So I really do like that. In addition to the handle is pretty wide. I know I'm usually a stickler with my handles and this one feels pretty darn good. And that's largely because once again, you'll see with something like this DJ, you know, it's a little bit thinner in overall handle profile, whereas this is a little bit wider. And it's actually kind of funny because the, the, the scales, like the slabs of G10 for the DJ, as you guys can hopefully see here, it are a little bit thicker, but it feels smaller because it has a more narrow handle profile, whereas the TWR has a little bit thinner handle slabs, but it has a wider handle profile. So it feels when you're holding it in multiple grips, uh, it feels nice in the hand. So lastly is the steel. This is, and I should also note that this handle is made out of carbon fiber. The actual models may vary. I think uh, Ryder is going to be making them out of things like fat camo carbon like this and also G10 as well. So I don't necessarily want to say it's strictly going to be carbon fiber. Now lastly is going to be the steel and that is ABL. Now the end production on these blades might actually change over to magna cut, but either way you slice it, ABL is a really, really solid steel. And I will say that in the end, at least apples to apples with what I have currently, ABL versus CPM 3V. 3V is slightly tougher than ABL, but at the same time too, both of these, like make no mistakes here, both of these are incredibly tough steels. Like you will be able to pry with this, genuinely speaking, and uh, it will not break. It shouldn't break at least, um, because this is a very, very hard or very tough steel as far as it goes. So overall, I really do like the, uh, the TWR, but let's let's talk about the good old disaster junior or DJ here. So the DJ does have some advantages over the TWR. I will say, um, I do like the fact that it is just a little bit larger. Um, I, they're both still very compact knives, but the little bit of extra blade length I feel helps, especially because if you are intending to like stab and pry with something, you know, obviously the longer the blade, the longer longer the handle, the longer the overall length, obviously the larger the fulcrum, the more leverage, the more force you will be able to put down on that knife. And so that is the biggest advantage to this blade. Now I will say one slight disadvantage, and this is definitely made to pry because it has this extended kind of widened tip, kind of almost like a, a shovel-like tip to it. So it is designed to pry. However, it is not sharpened. So when you go to stab into something, you're gonna have more resistance naturally that's essentially what the bevel and sharpened edge allows or helps with is it just lessens the resistance when you put force behind it so this one will have a little bit more resistance however it probably balances out because this one is substantially thinner especially at the tip and i don't necessarily think i hope i can get this on camera here I don't necessarily think that that would be the end of the world um, for the Disaster Junior because CPM 3V is still an incredibly tough steel, so it can absolutely take a beating. However, invariably, the thinner the steel, the weaker, you know, like the less material is there, the less material, you know, will obviously mean that this will break earlier or potentially sooner. Now, like I said, CPM 3V is still incredibly tough, so you can put an absolute wallop on it without an issue. But that being said, I would like to see it in a thicker steel, especially because in my opinion, you know, um, especially because in my opinion, you know, these things, these half face blades are not cheap in the slightest. And so when it comes down to it, it would have been nice to have seen just in a little bit thicker CPM 3V. Other things that I'm not the largest fan of, and I can 
kind of see. I'm not a huge fan of the thumb ramp, to be honest, in comparison to the TWR. I like that this is flat backed here, and that's because realistically, especially with the amount of traction that's already in this knife, like sure, is this potentially handy if you're really you know trying to crank into something and go full force like it could be but it's not honestly going to make the difference between you slipping up onto the blade and not like it, it's there's enough traction here that you're really not going to have to worry about that to be honest at least in my opinion i don't think it's that much of a potential danger However, um, overall, I'd say they're both pretty darn cool knives. I will say I do like the plain kind of non-blacked out look of the TWR a little bit more, but the Serico is not a bad option. Um, yeah, they're both good. Uh, I will say I am not a huge fan of the finger grooves either. I've mentioned that previously on the Disaster, Disaster Junior review. Um, however, they are workable. And for me, in my opinion, like they fit me okay. The pinky one is a little bit, a little bit off and for my hand, but they do work okay. Um, the finger grooves aren't the best. And by and large, the reason why I dislike finger grooves, unless it's like one prominent one towards the like uh, cutting edge is just that unfortunately finger grooves are not usually a one size fits all so if you have a knife a gun anything that has finger grooves like this is the reason why a lot of people don't like glocks right because they have finger grooves and so by and large finger grooves are not one size fits all so the original designer of the product might say hey this fits me like a glove but then you hand it to the next guy and it is just a lot of hot spots right so i generally try to avoid knives that have finger grooves because because by and large, you know, the chances of my fingers aligning with those grooves are pretty slim. So anyways, that is a look at the TWR and the DJ. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at both of these pry blades uh, or sharpened pry bars. There is a use and a time, in my opinion, uh, for sharpened pry bars like these guys. And it is cool to see knives out there that are this way. And once again, you know, obviously your average bushcrafter, wilderness survivalist probably won't, you know, go after these blades, but they do have use and they are applicable. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.